Hi, everybody. It's Bob Bloom back with Ted Thomas. And for those of you who were able to watch the video yesterday, uh, you're going to love getting to learn a little bit more about tax liens, certificates, and tax deeds. And so, uh, Ted, could you review for our students uh, just what you covered the, in the first one in a nutshell? What, uh, tell us a little bit more about tax liens and, okay. and tax lien certificates. Okay. All right, so folks, it depends on which state you live in. Half of the states sell tax lien certificates with just a piece of paper, that's all it is. And you can buy those pieces of paper and you can earn interest rates of 16, 18, 24, all the way up to 36% on that piece of paper. So compare that with the bank. So you can't invest with me, you invest directly with the county. All right, so you're gonna invest with the county. When the people come in to pay their tax, they have to not only pay their tax, but they were late. So they have to pay that penalty. So in Florida, the penalty is 18%. You're gonna get the 18%. So that's a tax lien. Now the other half of the states, they're not so benevolent. That other half of the states say, look, you haven't paid your tax, we're gonna slap your hand. We'll give you so many days to pay your tax. For example, let's use Texas, let's go to Houston. Now Houston is Harris County, and I can just guarantee you after going there for 10 or 15 different years, they will have approximately 200 properties in Harris County up for auction every single month. And you can go and raise your hand and say you want to buy that. And they'll actually sell you the deed to that property. They'll sell you the deed. However, the deed is redeemable. That means that people can come back. So the people have 180 days from day one to 180 days. Any day they come in and pay, and believe me, 97% of them are going to pay. Most of them come in and pay. They come in and pay. They have to pay whatever you paid plus 25%. So there's a tax deed. You can earn 25%. Now, that's a lot of money. And so you think about it. But that state has rules for tax deed buyers that after the 180 days go by on this 181st day, you get the property. How about that? You mm -hmm. get the property. So these tax certificates, they're predictable, certain, secure. You either get paid or you get the property. It's one or the other. Now, I didn't make those rules. Those rules are 200 years old. I just learned how to teach people this and make courses on it so you can learn how to do it. So back to you. Wow. So, uh, you know, 18, 20, up to 25%, 36%. How come my broker hasn't told me about this? Well, um, let's not call the brokers bad people. Here's the challenge. <laughs> the challenge is, the broker's probably not going to tell you about it. You probably have an attorney who's not going to tell you about it. You probably have a financial planner. And the reason they're not going to tell you is they all have to earn a living. So we all got to earn a living, right? So how's the broker earn a living? They got to sell something and buy some. How's an attorney? He has to bill by the hours. How's a financial planner? Well, maybe he's going to get a piece of the action or he's going to charge you a fee. There's no fees allowed in tax liens and deeds. You can't buy them from me. You can't buy them from Robert. You have to buy them directly from the government. So this is a a local county government. So I said Harris County, same thing applies if you go down and go to Travis County or if you want to go to Dallas County. It doesn't matter which county you pick. There's 254 of them just in Texas or you can go to California. There's another 67. There's 3,000 counties. They all sell either a tax lien or a tax deed and you can do any one you want. Wow. Well, that's, uh, that's a good explanation as to why most people have never heard about this. It's because the, the middleman is there is no middleman uh you, yeah yeah cut out the middleman that's that's really good ted i represent a lot of clients for, not only around the united states but also wonderful canadians who are investing in u.s real estate australians uh people from the uk as well so can people outside the u.s invest in these tax liens and tax deeds as well absolutely yeah. people outside the united states can do it that has one caveat that we have to talk about. You need an American bank account. So you have to work in dollars because we can't work in pounds and we can't work in Canadian dollars and we can't work in Aussie dollars. But the point is you just have to have an American account. I actually have some clients in Singapore and also in Thailand or whatever. But the point is you can do that. But I'm gonna actually show you a guy right now that uh, is was very important because he, uh, he had built a huge portfolio of rental property. And in the last crash, the market went down so much after 20 years of building up a rental portfolio, it went, it went down so low, he lost all those properties. So he wanted to get into a predictable business that he could know what his property. The, the reason I like this business is you can know what your property is before you start. 
So when I'm buying a property, if I go to the auction, I can see what the price is and I can estimate the, the, the selling price. So that margin is my profit. Anyway, he's in uh, Saskatchewan. And I suggested, look, be very conservative when you do this. Start out with residential building lots. Start out with, with small properties. Don't do anything big right away. So sure enough, he bought a residential lot it was worth, it was in Riverside, California, which has sky high prices. It was, had a value of over $200,000 and he bought it for round numbers, $30,000. But let him tell you the short story. You'll like it. It's quite nice. And he's making a video just like we are now and telling us that from Canada. So here you are. This will just take a minute. My name is Kelly Osmack and I'm from Regina, Saskatchewan. I'm a Ted Thomas student. I had purchased a, a lot in Riverside County at Riverside. Uh, I purchased it for 35000 and uh, after I got my title, I listed it. It was listed for a month, and I got a full cash offer of $55,000 U.S. Okay, now there's a guy. He didn't make a lot of money, but he stayed in his basement, and he made $20,000. Now, his second one, I'll show you that video, too. The second one he did, he didn't buy in California. He decided to buy near Seattle, and on the second one, well, you're going to see this. You're going to be shocked at what he made. So just watch this. After that deal, I went to the uh, Kitsap County in Washington and purchased a five-acre parcel um, in uh, Kingston. And I paid 131000 for that property. Uh, it's, it was a, had a 1,300-square-foot uh, manufactured home and a barn on the property really nice property i had it listed at 280 and i received the full price offer in four days all right now there you have it he said he sold it in four days now the reason we can sell these properties quickly is you don't have to be a broker you don't have to have any license from the governor or anything like that you just put the property on craigslist or you put it on ebay and you sell it you buy it low and you sell it low so he had a property that was worth a lot of money but he sold it at a low price so the beauty of this business is you can do it in any state. And when you buy, you're going to buy tax defaulted property with starting bids. I know this is going to be hard for you to believe. 10 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents on the dollar. Now, people say to me, Ted, how could you do such a thing? Folks, I buy online. People want to do that. I stay in my office right here in Florida and I buy colonial houses. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's a big square house. OK, and there are lots in New England and lots in New York. All right. And so I like to buy those. Sometimes I'll spend $100,000 or more on a property. I'm not bragging. I'm just showing. But the property might be worth $400,000. So I can fix it up and I've got plenty of room. Now, I'm not going to teach you that. I'm going to teach you to buy them for five and $10,000 and sell them for fifty and 80000 That's what I teach. But this is open. Whatever you want. If you're a big-time investor, you can do this. If you're a little guy, you can do it too. Wow. Well, good. I mean, that's uh, that's pretty fascinating. So should I buy tax liens or should I buy tax deeds? OK, if you're a really conservative person, start out with tax liens. Now, remember, tax liens, you're buying a piece of paper. You're not getting a property. You're buying a piece of paper. Ninety eight percent of the people will come back in and pay their tax. So you'll have to give the piece of paper back to them because that's a tax lien. You give it back to them. All right and you'll get all your money back plus the high interest rate. All right, so that's a very conservative investment. <laughs> now, after you're in it a while, you might want to look because there's going to be all kinds of properties that are going to sell for 10 cents, 20 cents on the dollar because a lot of people don't shop for the auction. Wow, okay. Well, should, uh, you know, starting out, should you buy big ones or should, should you buy small ones? Well, I'm, I'm a timid investor uh, because I don't, I, I don't want to, teach anybody to be aggressive. I want to say, start out small. So you can buy one for 500 bucks if you want, but don't do that. Why? 500 bucks, you make 20%, what'd you make? So, you know, maybe spend 3,000, 5,000 and buy a bunch of those. And so when we teach it, we show people, buy a half a dozen at the same auction, just buy a lot of small ones. They'll pay you off at different times. You get to know the business. Once you see how safe it is, you can't invest with me or a broker. You're giving your money to the government. You're not giving the money to me. The money never, I never touched the money. I'm a teacher and I'm, a, I'm not a broker and I'm not a CPA. So you're kind of getting the idea. Wow. Well, 
Yeah, I, I understand from what you've said earlier that you can buy all these online completely, but what if somebody actually wanted to go to an auction? So what would that be like? I mean, are, is this a big bunch of people at an auction or what? Well, that's my kind of person because I love to go to these auctions. Uh, okay, well, first of all, around you, there'll be a certain amount of auctions. Uh, the counties like to do them online because then they don't have to do any work, but they have so many auctions that are live auctions. For example, if you lived in a county that just only had a, uh, a low population of a couple of thousand people, they're going to have a live auction and six to 26 are going to show up. They probably only have five properties. But if you go to a county like Houston, you know, six million people there, well, then you're going to find out that there's going to be two or three or 500 people in the room. And that's going to be really live. People raising their hand and bidding, kind of like you see on television. Now, I go to the Los Angeles auction about once every three years. In Los Angeles, the auction is so big, they have to hold it at the fairgrounds. It's live. And there'll be over a thousand people in the room. So that'll wow. give you an idea. So you pick and choose what you want. It's got everything you could ever want. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you go all over the country to, to, to auctions. And so, you know, what would you recommend that somebody starting out, should they go to a big city or to a small town in say Arizona? I'm, I'm partial to the small towns in Arizona, the small towns all over Texas, because the auction isn't going to have, a lot of big city investors, you know, with their certain tie on and, you know, with their whole entourage and all that, you know, they're the big money guy. And you'll know as soon as you go to an auction who the big money guys are, because they, they always have to make a lot of noise. So you just, just oh, forget that guy, you know, don't forget him. Just make, make sure you don't bid against him. Okay. So if you go to the little one, you'll tell you, you'll see that people start slowing down on their bidding. Oh, well, they're slowing down. That means they're running out of money. And so you can think about that. So I would attend two or three auctions just to watch. It's fun just to go to watch. Okay, mm -hmm. now I don't go to watch. I go to, to, to do deals. But after doing it for 30 years, I've kind of got a sense for it. Okay, well, this sounds so great. But but are, are we going to run out of tax liens? I mean, is there enough for everybody? Oh, to go my. Oh, my. Well, I'm telling you, the government would like us to run out. So <laughs> every year in the state of Florida, Florida has about 20 million people now. And they will have 1 million property owners in Florida that don't pay their tax. So that means they're going to sell 1 million of these pieces of paper. So these people just sit and buy those pieces of paper on their computer. So they're, they're, they're not going to run out. Nationwide, here's kind of an approximate because there is no exact number. Nationwide, there's 100 million taxable properties. And about 100, what, 100 million. Will go to default. And so you, there's going to be 2 to 3 million in default nationwide. Wow. So wow. remember, there's 3,000 counties. There's more than 3,000 of them. And there's municipal auctions. And so there's, there's more auctions than you can. If you decide to go to auctions today, you can't get them all done. There's going to be 3,000 this year. Wow. Auctions. Okay. It's a, it's a big business. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I heard you say the minimum payment in, say, Georgia is 20%. Texas is 25%, something like that. So yeah, right? now George, George is my favorite state, and I tell you why. Um, nothing against Texas; I like Texas too. But I, in Georgia, Ed? they sell tax deeds, but it's redeemable. So that means if I raise my hand, I bid, and I get the deed, that means I get a deed to that property. All right. Now, for one year, the property owner can come and buy the deed back. Now, if they want to buy the deed back, they have to give me back all my money. So that's good. Mm -hmm. and 20%. Now, visualize a calendar in my hand. And this is day one, okay? And over here is, is day 365. So if they come in on day one and buy back, they have to give me all my money plus 20%. Is that good? Yeah. So any yeah. day of the 365, they come in and pay. Day 120, day 200, any day they come in, they have to give me back all my money plus 20%. Now, here's what's beautiful about Georgia. I haven't even told you the best part yet. So in Georgia, at the end of the first year, you can actually foreclose. So I tell all my clients, whoa, don't foreclose, don't foreclose. Just let it go to the next year. Because when it goes to the next year, it's no longer 20%, it's now 30%. And the check doesn't come from Ted Thomas, it comes from the government. And the year after that, it's 40, and the year after that, it's 50. Now, I don't make the rules, you just gotta understand the rules. So like, there you go, wow. is that good? Okay, yeah. that, that's uh, that could be a lot of money. 
Yeah. Wow. Well, well, you know, and I, I'm hearing you say you can buy houses, you know, the tax deeds for, you know, 10, 20, 30 cents on the dollar. So why would anybody ever buy a tax lien if they could buy a tax deed? Oh, well, um, a tax deed means you're going to get the property. There's actually people that don't ever want the property. Okay. And some people say, I don't want the property. I, then I have to maintain it and I have to have a, a renter and a lot of, they don't want the, so some people don't want property, no matter what, they don't want the property. So, and then there's other people, um, you know, if they, uh, the, 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 the people, when they get 60 years old, a lot of people don't want to work anymore. So they visualize that they're going to have to go paint it and clean it and do all that kind of stuff. So those people don't want property. So they just want to buy a tax lien and they either get paid, but if they get the property, they're just going to sell it. But they, if they get the property, they only paid back taxes. They didn't pay any more than that. Because when an auction takes place, the mortgage is wiped out. The mortgage is wiped off the property. So when you buy at a tax auction, there's no mortgage, there's no deed of trust. It's wow. wiped out by the county. The county treasurer has power, real power. They have the government power to wipe out the mortgage. So whenever you buy it at a tax auction, no lien. Wow. How about that? Wow, that, uh, that is really, really, really uh, enticing. Let's put it that way. Okay, well, Ted, we've, uh, I've taken too much of your time already, but, but folks, I wanna say this to anybody listening to this, web, this, uh, this little video, we're gonna have another one come to you tomorrow. We're gonna learn a little bit more about tax liens and tax deeds. And this is all going to lead up to a class that Ted's going to teach virtually on January 22nd. So if you like what you're hearing, you'd like to know more, stay tuned for the video coming to you tomorrow. Take okay, care. Okay, good. So we're going to see you guys tomorrow. And if you want to get registered for that, it'll be right below me and get registered. It costs $47 for six solid hours. And we'll look forward to having you there. There'll be about 150 to 200 people. You can ask questions. You can type them in. There'll be people to answer them. It's a fast-moving class. You'll just love it. I'll see you guys in the next video.